<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another month of the Chichester Chat Taste, the Decemberish episode. It's, you know, so it's <laughs> two of Daredevil Black Armor. Ho, ho. Holy crap, it's the Hobgoblin. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't that the cover copy? Oh. I mean, ho, ho, Hobgoblin, you know. Hobgobble, gobble. <laughs> it's a, it that could have yes moved right in from Thanksgiving debut to the Christmas follow up. I mean, oh my God, that would have been perfect cover copy. You heard it, Brie Ward. Chichester said I should be writing cover copy. All right, I am Phil. There's Lilith, and of course the man himself, Mister DG Chai. Mister, my mom says I'm talented, Chichester. Hello, sir. Okay. No, she didn't say I'm talented. She just oh. said she wanted the comics. You know, that's all. You know, she <laughs> she didn't want anything to do with me. She just wanted the the comics itself. So, um, thank you guys. It's good to be back here, and again for the at least next. Uh, three episodes uh existing in the current timeline so uh it's fun <laughs> oh phil did you want to start it off with that question that we talked about yesterday? oh yeah he probably can't yeah. say but you know we're nosy so we'll just see what we can get out of him that's right oh, yeah yeah because i saw online the uh yesterday that uh I think Timeless comes out this week, the issue, but they always like, I guess they did it last year too, and they tease stuff that's coming up in the uh, coming year. Yeah. And supposedly there's a leaked page out floating out there uh, showing Terror Inc. himself. So, uh, I, listen, and this is not. Being, are this are you is, involved? That's, that's my first question. Are you involved? I better, I better fucking be involved if it's real. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Uh, if, if, if it's, I mean, seriously, from what they've done with the character in the past with purple Deadpools and well-intentioned, but sort of weird mercenary, you know, David Laugham, you know, versions, um, weird mercenary dress, you know, dressed in tactical gear things, which God, uh, tax well away from what the character should be. Um. And this is not being coy. This is not being, you know, well, you know, I can't say. Or And I know I spent a better part of a year not telling you about Black Armor. But this is, um, it, yeah, I mean, I know nothing about anything. The only thing I know of is there's an appearance of him in a Spider-Man 2099, which I, which I, I, I saw a news, um, you know, blurb on. I guess there's a new Spider-Man 2099 coming or... There's yeah. always a new Spider-Man 2099. <laughs> well, okay. It's weekly in January. like every Okay, year. so it's weekly in January. Well, the fourth issue has... the They resurrected Terror Inc. Or they basically said the, you know, the deathless mercenary appears, you know, in the in a future thing. And actually looked like him, at least from, from the illustration I saw. So if that thing you sent was a, was a new illustration... Um, and I guess it looked like it. It didn't look like uh, Zafino or Richard Pace or, you know, any of the other ones that, um, you know, that have been, you know, done, excuse me, for real. <laughs> um, you know, maybe that's from there. But uh, um, but I, I have no idea what that's from. That I mean, it looks, if you look at it, he's got like some kind of weird uh circuitry pattern or something on his on his top coat so i'm gonna guess that it's from that um but i don't know anything about you know yeah uh, we'll younger. wait another year phil it's fine uh, again no honestly i wish I, I wish i did know and i wish you know i mean l listen if i've gained any um and and it's hard to tell because you live in sort of a bubble with these things there's no real reporting but if i've gained any any renewed cachet from uh from this black armor thing <laughs> uh you know then i'll definitely uh you know uh, spend it uh pitching cb sapolsky on a on a terror incorporated you know uh, just let us know something. where you need the petition when you need the petition we got you <laughs> start the petition early so i can you know bring it up and uh present it um it'll have at least Two signatures, three signatures, three. including mine. Well, your mom, yeah. four. No, again, she won't care. She, <laughs> won't know. she has no idea. She would, she, you know, she's only recently, uh, you know, been excited by the uh, revelation to her that um, Daredevil is a lawyer. So that's something new. You know, that's, that, that's he's a lawyer. Up. He's just come up. No, no knowledge. She, listen, she had no, she, mom, he had his own TV show. Come on. 
she never entered the uh yeah she she never entered a comic shop you know my father you know took all this stuff when he was alive and when i was writing comics you know he put all he took them i gave them to him and he you know he kept them and i found them recently like in a oh. nice little uh, you know he did a nice little uh collection of them uh oh, and had kept them yeah i know it was sweet and uh but my mom was like <laughs> But Not yeah, her I, thing. I think Daredevil Black Armor has been a really hot commodity, as I was talking yeah. about um, earlier before we jumped on. Um, I, I was nice enough. Um, I went into my comic book shop to pick these up. I had the variant cover. They had run out. Right. And there's this little kid who's like, oh, and I was just like, okay, here. <laughs> so my guy had to order me another one. So I only have this cover for right now. But yeah. Only the, so like, only, we were sold, they only were the Mark Bagley's cover. Was there more than one variant cover or just the one? I thought there was several for, for number two, but I guess there's just ended up being one. I'd seen other illustrations. I think there's some more that are like the one in 25s. No, oh, so even more rare. Because on the on the, the PDF that I get to proof, um, I guess they include all the covers, you know, just so they're there so i had seen like other my guy actually just got the one in 25 for me um from the first mm -hmm. one so mm -hmm. that should be here unfortunately after christmas but yeah well that guy okay. bends over backwards for her because she, she's putting his kids through college oh and good, his rock good, band good. yeah she makes like, yeah. She makes, like, rock band on tour there's like multiple <laughs> trips to the, that store every week so yeah so well that's good that it, it has that i guess i support I saying, my local comic book shops i remember I you support should. too yes <laughs> Yeah, you you know, and that's the whole point. Otherwise, there won't be any places. Exactly. And, and you'll you'll be lost trying to find a comic, or even know that there's a comic on. Well, Comicsology doesn't exist anymore, but you know your Kindle library. It's you have to be so specific about looking for something and not seeing something on the shelf. Um, yeah. And that's a it's a, a third lost space, point. and we're losing those desperately. And I, I really feel yeah. like the the comic book community does need more community, so mm -hmm. that people don't just see like what they see on like X mm -hmm. and you know, social mm -hmm. media and be like, oh, I don't want to be a part of that, you know? Right, right, right. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, on but that yeah, everybody way. in my store loves your books because they, they were gone. <laughs> if I hadn't oh, yeah. had it on the pull I list, mean, I, I wouldn't have had a chance. <laughs> I mean, I can't go in there. I can't find the very, the varying covers in my store. They're gone by mm -hmm. the time I get there. I, I was, I think I was there by like one, uh, I was, I was there probably a little before two this week and they were, the variants were gone. I, it's a it's a uh, it's a weird world where uh, the Mark Bagley cover is like the least <laughs> you know, interesting. One. Oh, it's only a Mark Bagley cover. And um, but uh, but yeah, I was saying before we started the uh, you know, I went to the shop and and granted, he only had a very few on the shelf to start with because I think he was mostly a subscriber or, you know, pull list subscriber business. So he said he had quite a few set aside for subscribers but mm. there were only three on the shelf and um and i went with my mom and my and my son and and my son grabbed one and my mom grabbed two including the variant cover by netho and oh i want that one for myself and i have to get this one for her friend marianne so uh -huh. i'm standing i'm standing there left with nothing and <laughs> it's like but i came you came so I, with could, me. I, I came to get my comic so i'd have a copy of my comic and i still don't have a copy of number two uh and uh maybe i could if you want that. i can send you one no that's <laughs> good I'm, I'm i'm gonna go to the the uh the sadder store today the one that told me last time good for you good for you little good for when i pointed out that i wrote it so maybe he'll do the same again i wrote this one too good for you hello good mr shopkeeper you. would you like a signed copy of terrible black yeah. <laughs> no interest. not even any interest i mean he was, my mother was so annoyed at that one he said, why, why didn't he ask you to sign them all or something it's like well we bought them all probably but um anyway anyway so uh so number two so what what do you what do you guys see think ask this, these are unusual ones because they're uh, shows, you know, because we have to structure yeah. them differently. So, what is your, what is, what's your, what's your take? What's your feel from the universe out there? Because, you know, like I what said, what kind of research did you do for Hobgoblin and Sabretooth? Or oh, barely any. Uh <laughs> Not that there's any needed. I mean, they're, they're very, you know, straightforward kind of characters. Well, you know, no, that's a great question because you know the the point was obviously to put him up against people he sort of hadn't been up against before and also and to justify the armor to quote unquote <laughs> justify the armor out. right just justify the armor uh you know the only justification to the armor was you know Devin and cb saying you know do a story about the, the armor 
<laughs> so he's in the armor. And it's funny when he's in that, like, I'm not doing anything I think any different. Well, I'm doing it differently, obviously, because I'm a better writer, I think. But, um, but you know, incident-wise, incident-wise, I'm not doing anything worse than I did even from the first issues when I wrote Daredevil. I remember him, like, grabbing a guy for information, you know, and just hanging him upside down from a water tower, you know, not torturing him, but essentially, like, giving him, you know, the hard business to get, like, a simple answer out of him. Um, but now, because it's that those things are in this black armor, it's suddenly perceived, it's like, oh, it's the it's the tougher rougher yeah. more aggressive daredevil in so it's really funny when you when you just shift it like that but um you know hobgoblin and i tried to parse the 72 different origins yeah. and who he is and especially and in the going, 90s yeah like is he this is he that is he the and uh you know Devin, the editor, you know, did yeoman's work trying to trying to get me an answer or when we'd speak, you know, to, to try to parse it out. And I just finally said, just go with the madman, you know, just go with the 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 insanity of it and bombs and smoke and 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 blades and have fun with that. And he's, there's never going to be instance where we're going to get into his pers quote unquote personality or take his mask off or do anything. I have no plans for that. And Sabretooth was Sabretooth. Um, <laughs> just, just like pure force. I mean, it was it was writing it from there. And I'm sure my voice for him is even a, is different. But I, I'm so different now as a writer than, uh, again, I, I was. I'm taking the little, like I picked, there was a Sabretooth series. And I picked mm -hmm. that up and I read that. And, uh, and obviously I looked at some different incidents where he showed up. And... Um, and I, 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 I think I put a little Liv Schreiber in there, you, you know, to, to kind of so hard it. not to, honestly. yeah, but you know, I mean, like he, I love that bit, but you know, the whole sweetheart thing and the whole, uh, um, it just felt right. You know, it just felt like this condescending brute. Um, and, uh, and everyone seemed to love the Uber scene, you know, the pre Uber scene where, he, you know, it looks like you guys are looking for fine folk or looking for a ride. And, and that was just directly inspired by Netho's uh, illustration. You know, once I, I saw that, like that was just a uh, awesome, you know, bit of business that he, he kind of put in there. So um, it, it was just, uh, you know, that type of research, but not a deep dive. I mean, I, I did a deeper dive, frankly, into um, the mindset of one percenters <laughs> 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 to get to a, uh, Strucker's monologue and and that sort of mentality because he's channeling the way unfortunately some people really think about society and nobody um, wants to work anymore. <laughs> and, no, it's 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 an, it, there's an insane um, nobody wants to work for nothing anymore. Huh? Exactly. There, there's an insane book called uh, uh, called Survival of the Richest and and it is and it's all about that exact mentality like you're you're you know we are we are the prime species and the rest of them the rest of them don't matter <laughs> um, oh i mean that's a nazi for you right <laughs> it, 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 it's it, there's a channeling of that but it's it's an insane book it's just like a whole it's a whole um you know group of folks who just have way way too much at their disposal who who are looking at the rest of us as rabble and uh and they're just going to bunker themselves off from the world instead of oh, using their. Is that a shot at Mark Zuckerberg himself. building bunkers? In Hawaii? So at least he picked, you know, a, a good location like Hawaii, full of earthquakes and volcanoes, because that's a perfectly like secure place to build your bunker. So, um, I I really love anyway, this I, page. By the way, oh, he's like, yeah. I never had the pleasure of torturing the last Daredevil, and I was like, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> But those are those are that's why this has been such a joy. Uh, and yeah, that is a great, great page. Um, and, you know, especially when I look at it from the perspective of the plot description and then seeing what Netho brings to life, um, you know, there's so much raw energy for me that comes out of scripting these things in this in this way, this old this old school, quote unquote, Marvel style way where I've written a plot and I've said, um, you know, Hobgoblin appears over the top of the boxcar, you know, in his glider, whatever it is, you know, full of smoke and 
you know, ready to hurl a bomb. And then you get that, right? That pluses it by a factor of 50, a factor of 100, and it takes you into a whole different place. I mean, I, as I've said before, there's lots of dialogue um, in the plots to an extent. You know, Daredevil's going to say this, Ubertooth's going to say that, maybe. But in that instance, there wasn't. I didn't have a line. Uh, I don't think, but I, once you saw that, it was like, ah, there's the line, <laughs> you know, there's there. You know. Like everybody was excited for Spider-Man. I was, I was excited to see how Hobgoblin and Daredevil would interact in this version. So. <laughs> and it's, I thought it was fun. I mean, it's like, you just, and you know, you just rip into him and, and, and there's the points where obviously he gets overwhelmed, you know, and, and I think that's, I think that's really appropriate, you know, that that's kind of, there's this, is it in this one? Am I giving anything away? Um, uh, no, it's in it's in it's in this issue where where uh, uh, you know Sabretooth says you're only human, yep. and and it's just you know allegedly like, yeah you know but you can't you know he can't he can't go past you know a certain point so he's going to get beat and he's not going to avoid everything. I think there's people who, that was always the complaint about the suit before, right? That it was he doesn't need it because his senses are going to help him like avoid everything. Well, if he can avoid everything, then he can go out, you know, in his skivvies. He doesn't have to, you know, <laughs> he can run around like Namor, you know, it doesn't, uh, um, uh, you know, matter, but somewhere uh, Justin just woke up going, what the heck? <laughs> exactly. What's happening. Um, but, uh, but no, a lot I, of I, frenetic action. And I, I love that. Like, that's what I was looking forward to. I was, I was really hoping you were going to lean into the physicality, um, oh my god! Saber tooth yes. against Daredevil's mm -hmm. acrobaticness, and I, I think that really paid off a lot. I, I really like that matchup too. Good. If you like this, um, yeah, three is gonna blow oh you. Away. <laughs> you three was, is. You said it was three. Three, three, up three, three, three. Honestly, exhausted me. I was wow. like, I remember, I remember sending in the last pages and said, "How the hell did we do this?" And I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean it's just like it is like just yeah, it just gets. And then four has a different pacing to it, purposefully so. Um, uh, well, which I really, well, but I just, you know, it just it shifted, it shifted gears, and it also it purposefully looked at Daredevil's ability to, I'm going to say, you know, save the day or save people in a different way um, than some of the brute force stuff you're seeing in two and, you know, in two and three. Um, oh, he's going to sue Strucker, yes. <laughs> That's yes, right. We set up. We set up. Drama. We, we set up a courtroom drama. I lifted a lot from the uh, the relaunch of uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, where Q put the you know the, everybody. Ah, uh, I, I thought we were going to go a long. Uh, you know. Okay. No, 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 no. We're just going to do this long-winded Gene Roddenberry scene. I'm going to re revert to my old ways. Lots of lots of captions. Lots of you know overwritten dialogue, and uh, have a good time with that. That would be fun. Exactly. <laughs> um, I had that handy. Um. So um, yeah, the action was uh, was very appropriate and welcome and fun. And, you did uh, give him a harsh tongue lashing in this panel here, where you told him he was just a man without sight performing street acrobatics in a pathetic quest for approval. How dare isn't you, sir? That, that, isn't that the? I'm sorry, Lilith. I don't know. You know, I saw some people say, you know, "Don't let like, me catch you at GalaxyCon." How dare it's, you? It's too much. Like you know monologuing but it's specific i like this was like a a, a a creative choice three pages of ripping into him you know and monologuing so basically that last page he says fuck you i mean that line <laughs> if you put a little asterisk next to it you know and had a translation you know just ring the bell is just essentially saying fuck you at the end of the thing and netho to his credit again i cannot give this guy enough credit you know that was not a splash page that last page originally and oh. and he turned it into it um and uh you know restructured the the pages prior so that he could land on the splash page oh. which is so much more effective um you know than just ending on it was always going to end on the face but uh but ending it in that way uh, man for me just like i was waiting for people to to see that and uh, you know, a couple of people again. It's a small bubble, and you don't know what everybody's impression is. But you know, some people said, you know, what a 
I really like the issue, but what a what a cliffhanger. Now I gotta wait. It's like, yeah, that's the point. That's I the watched. point. <laughs> you read a comic book. Exactly. Why, why do I feel we're gonna get a uh, Daredevil Kingpin team up against Strucker? Because just Strucker saying, Oh, you're used to you know sparring with failed criminals like Wilson Fisk. I'm just like, Oh no, you did it. You did you did not insult the Kingpin, which again, Kingpin is not one is not someone above punching a Nazi. I mean, he has fought the rest right. Of the, the, right. No, I'm gonna. I'm Nobody gonna give it away. Nobody should be above punching a Nazi. So. Wilson does. Wilson does not come back. Wilson was not a. Uh, you know, part of the the uh, whatever the machinations. You know, of and everything. that's okay. We got so much, like so much to look forward to. Yeah, Wilson. <laughs> really Wilson had his had his moment. Um, and and just the right amount of Wilson. Exactly. You know, for and, for this uh, particular yeah. story. And I, um, I, I guess, I guess it wasn't you know, Lil's favorite part, but I love the interaction with Spider Man. I mean, I. They need to give him this man the Spider Man book. Come on, come on. That uh, was so much fun. And and you know, again, it, it there, there, first, there was first, actually first line. He's like, Well, if you don't want him to call it armor, don't make it look like armor. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's the meta part of this I've enjoyed so much, is because you guys know from you know, and if not Deadpool, interviews. then of course Spider Man would give that right. Give but that but line. how many how many times did I say over these episodes, you know, when we talked about Daredevil? Like I never called it armor. I mean, that's that's me talking, you know, through the the characters in it's a tactical in a, gear. <laughs> but it's but it's you know it's or it's a suit or it's whatever. It's just it's. But for me, that's the great meta thing about this is I get to play that. You know, if you don't want to call it armor, don't make it look like armor. I never called it armor. Um, and even having that literal uh, line in there, but but that dialogue was in the plot. I sort of knew that line from early on. But I didn't know that page until I saw, you know, what Netho had done. And that was a great, um, you know, again, just just visual. And for him, who had wanted to draw Spider-Man uh, for a long time, that was his first chance to draw Spider-Man in a I have a feeling comic. somebody's going to tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, I cannot imagine. That's, a, that's what I said. I mean, I've gotten a great privilege of working with him. We're friendly on Twitter. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I think we have a good back and forth and I think this has been a good creative teaming, but that guy is on a trajectory with this, I think, because, uh, if this thing is as well received as it seems to be again in this bubble and, and, uh, he's working on Daredevil and he's making Daredevil vibrant and Daredevil's quote unquote real character. I mean, he's already been snapped up for another, uh, limited series on, on a set of, popular characters i don't i know he said that he's working on something i don't think he said which characters they are and i know what they are but um uh and i think it's just going to be that way going forward i can't imi not imagine the more he's in playing with marvel toys in the sandbox that he's not going to get tapped and so he's going to be a very hard person to work with again <laughs> for a while or maybe in my lifetime you know just in in the sense he deserves all the success he gets um uh because he's a tremendously talented i mean how many people um you know can nail that sort of level of motion and action and freneticism and stuff that you're seeing on those pages even the multi-panel pages and um and also deliver on the storytelling moments and the details look at it's this so first cinematic it's, right. It's look gorgeous. at look at the first Strucker panel, and look at that freaking like ridiculous like painting in the background. Like on the wall, he's got like Strucker on a horse, you know, like this proud, the you know, classic dictator general. Exactly. But it's like so this temp this temporary base this lunatic is built under you know Hell's Kitchen. You know, he's he's taken he's the gotta have a mural of him as a great man. <laughs> exactly. You know, but he put that in and and that was like, oh, my God, look at that little wonderful detail. Or there's later on, there's a moment where um, where Strucker puts in his his uh, his monocle uh, for a particular reason. And it's just such a great moment of thinking the stuff through. So, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the Spider-Man scene was was a ball to write, but it, it, it's just the right amount, you know, for me. I mean, it's just the right amount of, of it. Um, you know, uh, to me, there's a, and that was, a, that was, again, that was a good editorial suggestion. You know, why don't, why don't you 
not for that scene particularly, but early on, like, why don't you throw in Spider-Man? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You know, it was, it was like sort of like, here's some ingredients. If you've ever watched the great British baking show, you guys ever watched that that show? Yep. Is that that one challenge they do uh, midway through where they basically give them a recipe they've never heard of it. And it's like, it's just a sheet of ingredients, you know, Paul and Prue want you to make, you know, uh, a lard pie with like, you know, you know, 15, you know croutons on top, you know, and, and all they get is a white sheet with like ingredients. Like that's how it sort of was. I don't know what it, that is, but here, you know, don't forget to play with Spider-Man. Make Matt suffer. Where's Matt's love interest? Where's exactly. Matt? Make Matt suffer. And that, Make like, Matt that, suffer. that's classic. Because, like that's, I said, that whole monologue ripping him apart. Like, yes! That's the top. That was the top of the line. Oh, I but. chuckled at when that Asgardian thing came back around. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It was like, yes, yeah, set it up and, like, pay it off. It's like, you know, verily. You know, or just, you know, speak Lapharian, you know. <laughs> and have all the demands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that to come back around. But yeah, no, I mean, the, Netho's doing a good job. You're throwing him in like a big list of characters. I mean, everything from Spider Man to the Mole Man. We got the Mole Man. I was like, I know. Yeah, I, I know. know. I know. I, I, and I want to credit, um, let me see if it's handy, but, um, hmm. let's see, which version of Daredevil Black Armor number two do I have sitting in this room? No, oh, just... no, 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 no. So I'm going to, uh, is there a focus place in here? No. I don't know. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Be oh. You guys, you guys read this book? I have can't say that it. I've had no. the pleasure. No, you got to pick this up. So, um, Christine yep. uh, Hannah Falk, who who runs the other Murdoch Papers, um, uh, blog, you know, site um, where they've written lots and lots of, uh, uh, you know, great reviews and articles about Daredevil and Matt Murdoch, big Matt Murdoch, you know, uh, Daredevil fan site, essentially. So wrote this book about the science of Daredevil. So it's, you know, looking into... Oh, that's right up your alley. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's but you know, how does a site actually work? And she takes me to task a few times in here, you know, for stupid stuff like, you know, reading like computer screens with his fingertips in the past and whatever. But, um, but the point is, it's a great read. And there was actually a mention of Mole Man in there, uh, which sort of inspired like, hey, that would be great to like use... Oh mole man and not in, you know she just mentioned something specific about like uh like he has a kind of a radar sense and then i said well he, he has a little radar sense and matt has a radar sense maybe there's a a moment and that kind of as i got into the whole idea of um that this thing is under hell's kitchen and how did strucker dig it out and uh and then the mole man just came to mind and this was again this to play with things that you haven't played with before make the world larger and i didn't feel the responsibility or stupidity of the past where i might have felt like i had to over explain everything you know how did this specifically happen you know there needs to be a 12 page sequence of of deep uh uh explanation and captions of how the mole man met strucker and blah 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 and all the tortured twisted dialogue around that and instead it's handled in you know one flashback and move on <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if that's going to, I don't think it's ticked anybody off. You know, I think people are kind of rolling with it and just having fun. That's like, hi, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm Harvey. <laughs> 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 you know, but, um, but as in Alfred Hitchcock land, you know, you never show a gun um, in the first act if you're not going to fire it in the third act. So um, uh, I'll say that about the mole man as well. But <laughs> excellent. <laughs> and again, I mean, spoilers, kids. I mean, that's new information that Strucker knows he's days Matt Murdock. Yeah, and you know, I leaned into that and just again didn't didn't um yeah, I didn't worry about it. You know, I didn't worry about like it's just like it's a it's because to me, Strucker is so above it all in that way, or everything else is so beneath him, rather. You know, it's like your identity is me. You know, it's it's like such the most insignificant thing, right? It's, it's not like, like that I'm, Justice I'm... League episode where Lex Luthor gets into the Flash's body, lifts his mask off, is like, I don't know who this is. Yeah, you know, who are you, right? And it's like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you now. I know who you are, but I'm not gonna use it to do some, you know, uh, pedestrian threat to revealing you or threatening your people or or anything like that. 
um, you know, I'm just going to use it to demean you. You're a blind man, you know, and therefore you're lesser and therefore you, you know, you have a handicap and you must be, you know, demeaned further. I mean, if I was, if this was part of a continuing series, um, I'd actually use that revelation now that I'm, you guys have brought it up and I'm thinking about it. Like that would be a great moment for Matt to sort of think about his identity and realize like, why did I go through all this BS of quote unquote, killing myself and worrying about this, you know, it, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that whole thing of like, oh, I must, I must hide my identity to protect my friends from uh, threats to it. You know, here's, here's one of the biggest threats there might be. And he could give two shits about me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> now, well, let's just say by the end of this, Strucker may hate him more, but um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. But I mean, I was waiting for a line of dialogue of, for Strucker saying, you know, you couldn't have never toppled the kingpin without me, without my head, without Hydra's help. There's a little bit of a of a of a nod to that later on, and thank you, Phil. I mean, there's even you know, there's little callbacks again that that I enjoyed throughout this. Oh, the you Surgeon know, General you, callback. The Surgeon yes! General callback. Yes. You guys, I didn't do it specifically for you, but after it, after it had been done, I realized, man, we actually got the Surgeon General uh, in there. Uh, so yes, for you especially, now we have that moment where, without identifying her, it is that very specific reference of all possible things I could have drawn for my Daredevil run. We brought her back uh uh, in a reference point. And somebody got it. Somebody said, oh yeah, that's from 304, 305. <laughs> or 30, whatever it was. It's like, 305 man. and 306, yes. 305 and 306. Um, but, uh, but there's a moment, you know, where, uh, uh, you know, and it's not like I went back and reread it. It was just in, in my head. But even when he says, um, you know, you're a, you know, you're a failed criminal, you know, that, that sort of demean, you know, or Kingpin is a failed criminal, you know, that sort of demeaning thing calls back to that in a way, you know, there's, there's when they, when, when Hydra blows up uh, Fisk's stuff, you know, there, oh. there's a line from the, the Lieutenant that's something like, you know, you're only a criminal and we're, we are conquerors, you know, which, which, you know, is still like, <laughs> you know has has some free space in my head because it was just like this the level of things you know the kingpin is only ever here very powerful but you know these larger forces and i know you know you could have a secret wars and he could be you know slugging it out side by side with dr doom but um there's there's moments i think that it's fun to think about that hierarchy i mean i'm I, i'm not trying to make a joke but i mean he he is the big fish in the little pond yeah, yeah, you know, and that, and that's great, and because because that's also like that's also Daredevil, and that's also, you know, his focus comes back to Hell's Kitchen, you know, again and again and again. That's they don't do other things around the city, but it comes back, you know, to this particular moment, and and even toward the end of this, as we get to the climax and the the denouement, as it were, um, you know, he'll have a line I think about acknowledging again. I only need to be worried about this. There are plenty of other forces that will worry about about that stuff. And you did promise us a flashback, yeah. which we got in the first couple pages, to uh, his father. Uh, yeah, and that became a that that you'll see that actually. It's not spoilers. I mean that that actually became a, a cool device for me. I mean that became you, you know you're going to see that that repeat it through the next uh, three issues uh that became a really nice uh i'm not going to say thematic device but it became a nice device um which in this organic way that i now sort of i guess approach putting these things together a little bit more and following the flow and not trying to i'm going to read my joseph campbell book and now i'm going to like crowbar in a bunch of joseph campbell like themes and and stuff I mean, I still love that and I still believe in that. And that, that certainly in, influenced my, if you will, storytelling. It works ideas. for Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah, it works for Rick and Morty, right? But, but you know, in the past, I would have been like so obvious about like shoving this stuff into place. Um, you know, now creating those moments, those flashback moments, which just became nice devices. And look, I get to kind of like, 
play off certain things and introduce certain things, um, you know, in one form or another, they then resonate through the, the story later, like, like almost naturally, much as I think I said initially where I was talking to Devin and I said, well, is this, is this book just featuring the black armor or does, is it about the black armor? I think I, I said that last time. Um, and, and, and it is about, it is about the black armor, right? Even though he said, it's just, no, no, it's just the story. Just, he's just wearing the black armor and he wasn't being dismissive or trying to kind of play it down, but he wasn't trying to like make it into a bigger deal, but it becomes, you know, a little bit of, of I mean, the, the very last line of it kind of brings it back around um not of this issue but of the whole the whole thing you know brings it back around to sort of i think a nice bow in terms of acknowledging if you will thematic aspects of this without it being a, a crowbar and the father thing in the gym you know becomes its own very meaningful thing that i didn't sit down and like oh, this will be a father-son thing, and therefore, you know, you know, he, he can say, well, he we already know he's his father, so he can't have a, you know, Darth Vader line. No, I am your father. Yes, I know. Why are you saying that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. When, did, when, did, you get the, when, when did you get the soundboard, Phil? Well, I've had this for a while. You've yeah. already had it. You haven't used yeah. it enough. You've been here long enough. You Now you get the, uh, now now you get I the, get the soundboard. With the sounds right. like the rest of them. All right. Awesome. Awesome. But yeah, no, I mean, the, yeah, the whole thing with the black armor is like, it's a little more in depth than like, you know, oh, Spider-Man changed his costume this week. It's like, you know, when Matt was wearing this costume, he was pretending he was trying to pretend to be a whole different person. Than the world. Right. You know, it, right. It's going right. to be a little more in depth and stuff. And uh, and again, the, the Jack Batlin name, it's since inspired by his father. And, you know, so so do you did you enjoy the flashback stuff? Because, yeah, this is like an area you didn't really didn't touch in your first run. Is uh, Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I, did, I didn't touch it at all. I didn't really you know, I didn't think about the father much um, beyond that naming. Maybe I would have gotten into it. Um, seems kind of semi natural that I probably would have explored it. Um, but here it, it's it's fun, you know, and it's fun to kind of do that counterpoint to um to what his father told him not to do you know and 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 him not only doing it but doing it um by learning from his father you know from a distance you know trying out these senses before stick got in the picture and you know helped him uh refine it and focus it but to pick up on his father you know from the locker room or outside just outside the gym or or whatever and using a way to kind of follow those cues to learn some of what his father is um and therefore be closer to to him uh was uh it was an interesting thing it was an interesting way to kind of play with the character bits of matt even though it's little matt and i you know i love i love netho's young matt illustration so much i wanted do a, a, a little a little devil you know like series or something <laughs> sort of like you know uh young young matt murdoch you know running around the rooftops of hell's kitchen um but uh but that became nice character moments you know character exploration stuff as well because some of these issues do become very action they, they are very action heavy they have their moments but even the moments in between are are pushed toward a conclusion you know three is almost on a on a on a set stream of just one to the next to the next to the next even with the i'll call them character moments in between the more action-oriented moments they're all just very very directed toward that last page <laughs> um you know this one has a couple of different sort of beats the spider-man beats sort of here and then the wand beats sort of here and and it kind of like flexes through until the dial just starts to get turned up at the rail yard and then the whole thing with jack, jack quote unquote giving out legal advice so is yeah this, this, you know matt can't stay away from the law no matter what even if he's supposed to be dead you know the, the law is so important to him he has to keep a hand in the whole you know no matter what yeah phil thank you for like bringing that to the fore and 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 i'm glad that came through because that's that's the counter not the counterpoint that's the balance point in the whole story 
that Daredevil needs that balance or, you know. And, right. And that was always in the back of my head, you know, where, where did, where did, you know, we, we ended 325, you know, was, was the end of fall from grace. And, and in my muddled like run to 350 or something like that, it, which of course I never got to, um, you know, that was like part of my uber plan right that matt's going to go through stuff and matt's going to confront certain things and matt's going to recognize how important the lawyer side of him is and uh, and ultimately become the lawyer again and you know get rid of jack batlin and just reveal to the world that matt murdoch's around and go back to what he was because he couldn't stay away from the law um but now i'm in this bubble right this different bubble not the twitter bubble where the three people who tag me and say black armor is great well, what about the rest of you i don't know like the rest of you hate it for all i know but um but the bubble here is this weird zone of you know what people are calling the black armor era <laughs> where we know you know in marvel continuity all he does is like destroy the costume <laughs> And presumably go insane for five Mark DeMattis issues. Um, and then I guess he just reveals that he's alive or somebody says Matt's alive. I don't even know what happens after that. that but, it's so weird because after DeMattis, like, I think it's like an issue or two. There was like an issue, uh, one or two fill-ins. And then like, oh, who was writing it? Uh, when they come back, he literally just walks in the court and it's like, oh, you know, well, you know, my life was threatened. And, you know, when Nick Fury tells you to go in the witness protection, you go in the witness protection or something. That was it. That was the way they handled it. Was, it? Yeah, it was like a panel or two. It was basically just it just him basically saying, oh, Nick Fury put me in witness protection or something. <laughs> sorry to be sorry to be late, Your Honor. Yeah. I... <laughs> Pretty much. That's even better, man. What a fucking like. Just, <laughs> like it could be like, worse. He could have made a deal no. with Mephisto. You know, oh yeah. Uh, somebody isn't it funny? I don't know if you saw that, Lilith, but like uh somebody thought that the whole Spider-Man scene was a uh, you know, where he says, you know, I don't want to make a deal with the devil, or you know, we was doing his like back and forth with them. Somebody got really bent out of shape that that was a dig at that what is it one more day yeah you know spider-man series like what a what a stupid joke about you know one you know omd and you know that, that, that doesn't work that. but but <laughs> but i'm like name. i'm like i'm you know i'm i'm writing a, what's omd i said i don't even know like i'm totally <laughs> ignorant of this and they're like omd was this and this and this it's like well listen that all sounds interesting or horrible i'm not sure which but this is just a joke about the venom costume that's all it is. It's like if you read the thing in context, it's it's and the guy has horns, so therefore he's a devil, and he's making a deal with the devil about information. That's it. It's no more Some complicated. Some people's media literacy is not the best. It's okay. Or or too yeah, or too extreme. So um, you know, so we, I ran away from you know from from that reference, and I forgot what the original question was, and I I lost my train of thought because we went off on this twitter cognitive <laughs> dissonance um uh you know track it, wh wh what were we talking about phil replay the I tape mean, i mean we were talking about <laughs> we, we were talking about matt we in the law and then uh you know, right and and, and so no back. no no and that's the important point and you know so this story because it exists in this bubble um you know forced me to accelerate that and in a great way that again i had not intended at the start of this, it wasn't like I sat down. And listen, I for anybody who thought I had this story or any of this in my mind for the last 20, 25, 30 years or whatever the hell it's been. No, right? I wasn't like sitting around thinking about any of this. That there's a but it actually works out pretty well for me so far. That it feels like I did in a way. But uh, but I had to accelerate that because that's an important balancing point. So if I never get to do this again. And, and, you know, that there's, there's no indication that I do. So I'm treating this as like, you know, this is just, you know, this is a great, like actually elegant, like, you know, last dance as opposed to, as you pointed out, Lilith, you know, betrayal, treason, you know, all the titles of, you know, the Alan Smithy stories. Um, uh, the, the, legal, the legal aspect is so important. So the street legal thing where he sort of like says, I have to do this. Right. Just like accelerating the mole man scene into like one flashback. Let's just have him come up with something. Let's just have him like start to kind of play 
I, I, I'm going to play le a legal guy on the street. You know, I'm going to be I'm going to be the good Saul Goodman, you know, of 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 Hell's Kitchen and whatever else, and just start throwing out. He's never going to show up in court in this, but he could. There was one point uh, when I was writing the plot outline, it just didn't fit in, um, uh, you know, in the sequence of stories here. But I had him give advice to somebody uh, in the outline. And then I was going to have him sitting outside the court, like eating a sandwich or something, listening to the to the advice being played out in court. You know, like tell your tell your court appointed lawyer to do this, and then listening outside the court to oh. hear you know the mirror of that to make sure that what he had advised actually was happening. You know, so he could see that his influence was going beyond. I can tell you to file this form. I can tell you to go do this. I can tell you to go ask for this. Um, but he obviously can't appear in court and do the defense and all that, but he can do everything up to that point. And that makes a balance, right? That was the whole point of the church scene in one, you know, where I need the two faiths. I need the church and the courts. Um, and uh, and I, I, you know, Juan becomes a character. You know, that guy becomes... That's not, he's going to show up again. It's not like just one like scene here that I sort of threw in, um, that that's setting up something, uh, of to, to carry that through. Um, and, um, I think that's now an important, well, they can dismiss it again, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for me, it's an important point of his growth during this, during this bubble black era you know uh black armor era i mean I, can, oh. I mean i can claim this in hindsight but i'm like i always thought the point of yeah the, the whole storyline like you had you've been able to go to 350 was like yeah he needs the, that lawyer side of him because exactly you know, he's yes. just daredevil and jack batlin he's just you know running amok and you know he needs right counterbalance right. yeah totally which is so was... weird because that's where we are at this modern point in daredevil all that to like kind of circle back to like he needs what is certain it? things okay good because i i purposefully have not been reading any of the current run as i was finishing scripting this because i didn't want to be i think I you will enjoy influence. that this modern part um of daredevil good. the person that's writing it is doing a really good job kind of taking it back to street level and like well, really actually caring about matt the person and not just not just daredevil all daredevil all the time right right which we right. have been doing for quite a while yep and you know, there's a lot of Daredevil all the time in this. And can I and recommend it's... Gang War with Electra when whenever you get a chance? Oh, That's really oh yeah, that looks good it's, too. It's like yeah. such a great time to be a Daredevil fan right now, especially like so. We got Black Armor, we got Gang War, we got the regular book. Everything's just doing really good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, I definitely want to check out both of those, and I had just consciously not been because I did yeah. not, and I won't. I won't until I get the proofreading notes back on, and the editorial notes back on on four. Uh, just because I don't want to be, yeah. There's nothing totally else good. I want to be influenced by. I don't want to pick up on any dialogue, anything that was, you know. Obvious. You'll get to pick it up and trade at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I think some uh, a lot of modern stories are best like kind of just wait for the trade. Yes, but you could you could lose the momentum of the series um, and and have the series. I mean, I'm sure there are people with this because they announced the trade. I think even before. <laughs> they announced the ship dates on the individual issues. And uh, I guess there are people who just do that. And that's great for the trade. But then there's less momentum in the stores if nobody's going to pick up yeah. one, two, three, and four. I don't I mean, know why. They, I, I, I do know. both. I'm such a glutton. I, do I, I, I don't know why they have to announce the. Uh, well, I guess so people go pick it up. But uh, like the trades, because they pretty much collect everything now. So it's yeah, like, yeah. everything. And, it, and it's and it's right. And it's structured for the trade, which I get. And I, I, I think is a smart thing. But it does make the momentum. I mean, before in the, in the olden days, right, you'd get the trade if the series was successful. If the series wasn't successful, you weren't going to get a trade out of it. It was just like, ah, we did that. Move on. Good luck um, finding those floppies. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I hate that term, floppies. But I mean, um, but you know, there's no, there's no terror incorporated, you know, collection, right? Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mark um, my words. You know, just wait. It was, you know, it, there was no need. There was no, there was no saying, okay, let's collect this now. It's like it was a quote unquote failed series, right? It didn't continue, so it's done. 
Um, and but now I think they structure these mini series and these special event series. Oh, even the regular books, they, they, they well, the regular book, right? It becomes the omnibus. Here's issue one to seven. I mean, that's how I read uh, Immortal Hulk, I think, you know, the first time I hadn't mm. read the individual things, but then there were the six, seven, eight, right? Uh, you know, bulk collections, which you know, ran through them there. So is that? Yeah, I, I I definitely don't recommend waiting for the trade for this. If yeah, you have no, it, go no, go no. back okay. and good luck finding okay. them. <laughs> this re, this reads better. Know. This reads better if you buy two copies at a time. Kid. You got it. It just feels so good to have the very and the main cover. I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> Bill, I'm not biased at all. You guys it, know. Unlike Russell, I do buy variant covers. Oh yeah. Does, does the yeah you want? Does the story feel different when you read it? You know. It's different reading it from the shiny cover. I'm not gonna lie, it was nice. <laughs> yeah, right. It had a nice you half. Know? The you know the cover was like hard. You know a nice good yeah, cardstock. Yeah. It makes it's, it feel like the nineties. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You know. Um. I. Uh, mm-hmm. that, and that's. Listen. I was never a fan of variant covers, and, and and you know back in the day, here's a scratch and sniff. Here's a mezzotint. Here's a. You know. Here's a plastic bag job that they have to buy four issues of in order to kind of collect their little poster set i mean a lot of it became just bs but i will say that that shiny cover is pretty awesome and i saw that they were going to put that on the on the trade that that particular um uh illustration but it doesn't really work as you you got it there in the lower right it doesn't really work as well when it's just that i i'm hoping they're going to put some foil on that trade or um, just put like something in the background, like the city. Or yeah, because yeah. just the white is not uh, as effective. I would rather see Netho's cover oh, on the yeah. trade because it's so fierce, and I think it reflects the story more than that. I mean, it's a lovely illustration. I mean, don't don't get me wrong; it's really, but it's not as in tune with the book, if you will, as say Netho's uh, shot is. How you want to push some units, make that the cover. Then you got Spider Man on. Yeah, there you got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was funny. The couple of Galaxy Cons I had gone to, I had the black and white of that, you know, um, and I had printed it up um, to just hang in the booth behind me and just some more like, look, I'm a writer. Nobody's paying any attention to me anyway. Um, you know, here's some visual stuff to kind of look over here, and uh, and 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 everybody wanted to buy that one. Like, you know, that I wasn't even selling it. And they're like, oh, can I buy that that illustration just in black and white? Because it's so striking. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, it's just a great, great shot. Yeah, the, the combination of you two is really great. Um, I, I really enjoy hearing the process about, like, how, like, you saw that. You're like, oh, that belongs there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's a, that Spider-Man shot's a good also, you know, going to give some credit again to the editorial guys. There's... Um, some of that uh, captioning on that, uh, um, the original thing I think just had the line from Spider Man, and and the lines that the, the the cover lines from the gym, you know, take a swing, and then Daredevil's intro statement, and then Spider Man's, um, you know, jab at him, and then the other lines about you know Spider Man thinks I'm dead and blah blah blah, like those were a little later in the scene, and editorial, you know, said no, we got to bring these up earlier. You know, I was I was trying to kind of draw the audience in and then I could deliver the stuff across it. But they wanted to kind of no, let's let's take care of this now. Get the lock in on, you know, the background details. And uh, that was a good a good clarity suggestion, Um, you know, uh, and that's part of the process. There's one process share. There's one two lines at the beginning of the rail yard scene that I had. Rewritten for clarity to sort of establish how does he know something bad is going here. But somewhere between me writing those and the and the final issue, somebody rewrote those and obviously trying to make it more clear about something. So I'm hoping I can get those corrected for the trade, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So those lines there are not like me approved. Um, they, they don't they don't they don't break anything necessarily, but they're just like they're not the same cadence and flow that I was trying to go for 
But yeah, I mean, I'm a, like I said, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, so maybe it just hits me. But I mean, I love your dialogue. I mean, that scene is Spider-Man is it's perfect. It's that verbal I mean, sparring. You, if you don't nail that, then you don't yeah. nail Spider-Man, and you Spider- nailed that one. That's Spider-Man's dialogue, and again, Netho can draw Spider-Man. Right. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I just love, you know, he makes that first crack about the, you know, if you don't want people to call it armor, don't make, <laughs> don't make it look like armor, and that, and that Daredevil shoots back. But didn't you used to swing around the city wearing an alien? He's like, yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> You are the devil, you know. <laughs> but you know, that, I, I, like I said, I enjoy the hobgoblin stuff. Uh, the, uh, it's my love, favorite stuff. It's like, he's like, who's on balance now? And I'm like, it's still you. It's still right. you. Well, well, Lilith, we love seeing the hobgoblin get like kicked yeah. in the face. So, I do. Yeah, that, that it's my exactly. favorite. We dedicate a whole month to it on Spidercast every single mm-hmm. year. <laughs> Just great line, like violence first. I approve. You know, it's like it's just you know, there's just there's a fun, it's a fun character to write in that way, and just kind of like letting the, letting the the words off the leash. That's that that's the follow up black. Uh, well, yeah. Oh, there, what, if what, ever what, is a follow up, no, 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 no. I was going to say if there's ever and there isn't, there isn't. There's nothing. There's no. I, oh, come on, I swear, come on, Janice. The I, holiday season. Give, I, me a, give me a headline. I, come on. I swear on my news. mother's going to the comic book shop, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and stealing my issues. You know, there is no news of any anything new. But as you're talking about it, wouldn't that be like a cool, um, you know, follow up to things of uh, like do now? Now we've set the stage for a Spider-Man new Daredevil team up especially with that scene kind of going on about like, well, you know, don't, don't not too fast as a first date, you know, and, uh, you know, Daredevil clearly wanting to recapture some of that, you know, that, that relationship and that thing, that would be a fun, um, uh, you know, full on adventure, you know, between the two of them. But, um, uh, but there's all sorts of things you could do. Oh yeah, stay tuned for the yes, the kids, the follow-up five issues. Yes, Spider-Man and Daredevil kick off Goblin in the face. Right, base. right, yes. right. <laughs> or, or the courtroom scene, you know, where you know Matt says his his what his uh, line about witness protection, and then you know Melvin comes in at the back of the courtroom. Oh, like here, this is yours, and he has a little package, and he opens it up, and it's the suit, you know, you know, for him after the fact. If you want to use this, you know, I've got it for you. I um, he, I don't know what it was. I think it was then the first uh, DiMatteis issue where it, it's like he just had the red suit sitting around somewhere. So I don't know where it yeah, came. He never right. explains it, but it yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mark's a great writer, and and uh, and I, I any anything I've ever said, you know, negatively there is just in the interpretation of the the that Matt was so confused or whatever by this alternate thing and it's a choice and i don't know what editorial direction he has i have no i have no animus or anything oh, no. except respect for mark the issue before there where they cut it up in the bedroom that we oh, know Ellis, yeah. that you know that that one's like what the fuck you know but that's also just a choice and and a funny one at that so. Well, the, the joke's on them now, because this is great. Um, I've seen nothing, like I said, nothing but great reception. Oh, Every time I go into my comic book stores, they're gone. <laughs> Day of. That's absolutely good. just gone. That's anywhere good. I go I'm online, so happy and excited. I, anywhere I go online, I see praise for this thing. I don't and that, see that's that crazy, because online is... Oh, yeah. Especially online on... Uh, be brutal, yeah. 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 I haven't uh, seen... Yeah, I mean, I've obviously, you know, done the Google search and, you know, the sad, pathetic thing of typing in, like, you know, review and stuff and, and trying to... Um, uh, and yeah, the only negative things, I, I mean, I'm, I know they're out there, but the only really negative things I think I've seen are, are just some video reviews of people who just, why does it know, exist? You know, no, no, it's more, it's, 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 it's like, more, don't, don't, yeah. Don't, don't. Why was it Hobgoblin on page one? And I we had to make wait till the middle of the yeah, day. It's uh, more, more the rambly, like kind of review podcast things, which I never really understand where they're almost like reading it in real time. You know, it's sort of like, you know, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. There's something here. I don't know. Is he? Is his, his name is Jack? Is is that the guy from the boxing ring? I'm not really clear on what's going on here. And and you know, and he's wearing this. I don't know when this takes place. Seems like there's a lot of action. The art looks good. Yeah, I'd give it like a six out of you know ten. I don't. Know, maybe I'll pick up the second issue. Oh, so so a bunch of children who've hard, they've been. I, I don't know. Five minutes. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure. So, but you know, there's been some really good you know, I think constructive, uh, thoughtful reviews, which haven't all been just, just praise, you know, they've been 
give and take and uh and i respect that they've taken enough time to now where's our wired point. review have we done yes <laughs> oh well this one doesn't have you know wire doesn't have the uh the juice it once had and i didn't i chose not to use the hacker in this story so they won't they won't cover this but but no and so this is something you know be, and i'm not looking for um you know for the talk show kind of like praise or anything but i'm just curious because you guys have been such kind reviewers over the time and you are pretty familiar with my body of work god help you i mean you know what are you seeing that's that's different about the way this is written yet is still like me i guess it's, like, what it's is... just, i feel like it's just a more mature streamlined version of your writing in the best mm -hmm. way i mm -hmm. really see the growth mm -hmm. yeah I, I i agree with that and the thing that's still the same with you i say is like the dialogue yeah like, the dialogue it yeah. quippy Good. poignant because again there's so many there's <laughs> a so little many more to the point now and there's so many different Marvel characters in here. And I think, you know, I've, I've been reading these things for decades. I mean, I think everyone sounds like they're, they're supposed to. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Like, I Good. think you didn't take it, like, too seriously. Like, sometimes you would take some things a little too seriously. Yeah. I feel like you're having nothing but fun. And, like, you're just, right. like, in a really good headspace. And I think you, if, if I feel the joy that you had coming back to the character, actually. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It that, comes through. Great that's great that's a great way of, of putting it no and and i appreciate that like kind of like analysis that it somehow like feels like me but it's you know it's this different well more mature beyond the gray hair you know version of me um but, like i said uh, i feel like everything that you went through like the marketing that the ads and stuff like everything is just built up to this perfect point for you to come back and visit this character and mm -hmm. kind of give the fans of of that run a little closure a lot of justice and like now that people are like i like oh it's a landmark landmark run now you know i know isn't that like yeah, that's awesome legendary writer it's like a legendary writer returns from his landmark run really Honestly, who like? But I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll run with it. And, and yeah, introduce new people, and hopefully they go back and read it and fall in love with it, just the way Phil and I did. Oh yeah, I mean, um, stuff's getting collected. I mean, well, of course, Fall from Grace is always collected, but it's like, I mean, aren't they doing uh, what are those um the epic collections or something? Because I saw that like yeah, from like, um, Anne's you're... run into your starting into your run and stuff. Yeah, I I I saw um you know Man Without Fear uh, site uh you know cool just. Uh, Mithra's site uh he puts out the um dates for new yeah. stuff and I saw um I think there's following the collection of this there's a fall from grace collection and a root of evil collection but I think those are just going to be the epic collections again you know I oh, think they okay. just reprint I think I don't think they're going to just do a you know that singular fall from grace collection or do just a root of evil collection they'll probably just redo the epic ones where those stories are bundled in with a lot of other stuff um that would be my guess because i mean fall from grace has been collected a few times hasn't it it was originally collected in its own because it was successful like that was then they did a, a specific fall from grace collection which had extra pages in it which i think have been bound into the epic collections but they never reprinted that one ever you know they never went back to that one had that really striking um it's not over here but um it had that really striking uh scott mcdaniel cover he did a very stylized electra and daredevil on the cover and uh but that one was to my knowledge never reprinted for and i was always going into the stores and you know what did i do wrong right there's no <laughs> and they never collected root of evil they never collected the electra mini because i guess it just didn't do well enough um but uh but now they've done a, a, at least one or two of the of the epic you know reprints but, mm. um i know they just did a second printing of the the last rights uh fall of the kingpin the one where the fall of the kingpin story is in there they're weird because you know you you, you see the the title and the cover is fall from grace but that's not necessarily the lead story like oh. it might be buried in the middle of it so you gotta you i think gotta... they're a little bit better about that nowadays too though oh, yeah in terms of how they're structuring it or yep. like arranging the issues and stuff yeah i mean they're nice they're beautiful they're nice volumes i mean it's great to have all that stuff in one place it's just always funny how they they structure it 
yeah again they they just need to figure out how to start reprinting some of this old stuff they didn't that never collected or anything so like i said not just you i see other writers like uh the mattis and all them that you know have who have runs that you know everyone loves and they never like collected them and it's like yeah why not yeah yeah i mean i don't know if every I, well i guess a lot most things are available right on marvel unlimited but i, I think there's you'd still be surprised <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say there's still some gaps. I, I think I think I think your original Daredevil runs all on there now. I know for a while it wasn't, but I don't know if it was just right. like catch up or what. But I think it uh, is all on there. Right. The interns yeah. alone, they're doing the best they can, scanning yeah, but, the pages, yeah, scanning stuff. Right, there's a lot of the time. I'm sure, the film's not available, and yeah, it is scanning pages. But I don't know. Do you find? Could you find Terror Incorporated on Marvel Unlimited? I guess guessing not, but who knows. I've never, I've never looked for it. But last I looked, I don't think it was on there. But again, I yeah. mean, it's changing all the time. Yeah, too. right. Well, especially if someone's making an appearance next year, maybe they will start. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's out of my control. Like I said, I know, whatever, I know. Whatever, whatever they're doing there, but it better and, fucking be involved, Marvel. You know, but but you know, again, I'll give if 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 they've got him in a, in a futuristic trench coat and some kind of like thing there, you know, then. At least they're staying consistent and they're not doing, you know, a futuristic Deadpool outfit or a futuristic, uh, yeah. um, you know, um, battle dress, you know, type of thing. So it'll be interesting to see what they're they're Honestly, I probably won't even see it, but I hope they do the character justice and have some fun with it. And I think I, I think I've asked you this before, but like on Marvel Unlimited, when your stuff's on there, like when people read it, do you do you get uh, residuals or whatever for like? Uh, you get. Does it work um, like Amazon Kindle or like the Kindle Unlimited where they, yeah, you have you, to read you, the whole story for it to count I don't, towards the I have, credit? I have no idea how that goes. I think it's probably I don't know. I mean, I get in incentive payments on various things, mm. and and there are dig sometimes there are digital. Uh, line items on there you know they do itemize it and you know they're pennies they're literally they're pennies you know that but you know over time they might add up to a couple dollars um and uh but uh well it's so it hard does... to think of that even back then so well no none of that was thought about and obviously and and so the fact that they're doing it is is yeah that's nice i'm sure it's a very very small fraction of whatever they're making off of it um but, I, just, I just wonder too is i i saw it as somebody said something recently i don't know if how true it is or not but like supposedly digital hasn't taken off as as well as they wanted it to and it, it never will until I, I the, know. yeah until it gets better like it has to like the format has to be a little more accessible it just does but i, I again and, and, I, don't, I don't know if it's just me being an old man but i'm like I, it made me happy that you know the paper is still King. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, it's a, to me, it's the shopping experience and that's mm -hmm. what it kind of comes down to. And, you know, that, that came to mind just more from, cause it's Christmas time and, you know, you're hey, I'm shopping for presents, uh, you, you know, and this is also, I think the, the, the part of like comiXology just being like sort of absorbed into Kindle, you, you know, on the, on the, beyond that is, is, you know, I go into a store, even like the sad store, right. The sad, like, you know, good for you store. Um, uh, you know, you can see everything at once, right? And I can get my eye candy and I can be drawn to this and I can be drawn to that. Comics online or in a digital form, I feel much more, you have to go and look for them. It's and a very it's active... Right. I have, you have to, know to know what that you're I, looking for kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you can browse. I mean, there's a Hoopla, which is like a, a you know, a... Um, a book movie comic thing that goes through like the local libraries you, mm -hmm. you know so you can get you can download the comics for you could, you know like a loaning basis you know for a couple of days um has an okay interface you know can like oh here's what's trending here's here's what's new but you know it's still clunky right it, it yeah feels... comiXology was the best one i don't know how amazon fumbled that I right. don't well, know they, 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 they don't want multiple readers right and they want they want to then have you within the world of their bigger book world they're bigger auto you know which it just uh, kind of does I, I don't think a lot of people really understand like the niche of the comic book community like i said like it's a third space and like it's a, it's a dying third space just like malls are and we just really have to like yeah just keep but it alive you can't, you, you can't browse on kindle like as well right i mean i have, I have dozens of books on kindle i've yeah. bought that i can't find half the time so I, I i mean you know to sort of then now browse for comics and i think i'm going to browse for a comic because lilith you recommended something and i'll like Oh, go look for it. 
I mean, when I stumble across things that I've never heard of before, I feel like it's a gem, right? You know, it's like, oh, wow, I was really lucky I found Kill Lock or Harrow County or something like that that I never even knew existed. And, and, but those are much harder to find in, in the, in the, in the way these interfaces are built now. And I think if they're not taking off like they thought they would, I think there's that aspect, you know, that, that this is that nothing like holding holds you back. I, got, I no, actually read is. an actual newspaper and I was just like, it took me back to like high school. I was just like, oh my God, something right, in my hands. Right, right, but if like you walk heavy, on, right. Right. Giving but, but me radiation my, poisoning. I mean, my mother's like the, the perfect example again, right? She walks up to the shelf. She sees that mirrored cover and she grabs it out of my hand. She grabs it off the shelf and it's like, and then she flips through it. Okay, it's a gimmick, but yeah, something catches your attention. That Bagley cover is attention getting, you know, um, uh, and that's going to get your your eye you know in on it in that in that physical form but i think it is an big, art form too and art totally. needs to sometimes be experienced on a one-to-one -one physical totally. sensation since all yeah. your senses like even the right. smell of the paper even though it's not like old school right. comedy, still right. the smell still has a certain feel that can take you back especially on a daredevil book right especially right wait till you get to that scratch and sniff scene in <laughs> issue three um is that the know, carnage we're, we're, scene <laughs> no, that's the uh, that's you know where he says you know it still smells like alley cat. We pay that oh, off, no. like, you know, and look, you know. <laughs> smell smell saber tooth up close and personal. Like you know, we'll have a, well an awful time with that. I could have probably suggested that like back in 1998, and somebody would have said, "Yeah, hey, can we do that? That's that's <laughs> great." That to the universe. <laughs> Oh, the next version of Fall from Grace. There's a, a scratch and sniff scene somewhere. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh, the, hopefully, it's not when they chase Morbius into the sewer. Down, down in the subways, yeah, in the sewers. That would be like a uh, uh, awesome. That'd be a little too Ex real for the New Yorkers. Experience it like Daredevil does. Like you know, Matt's Matt's hypersense issue. Issue that would be like the os the best gimmick like book ever, where you had like sound chips embedded in it, so you could like hear the extra sounds he hears you scratch and sniff something they're doing covers, you know varying covers now with sound chips we'll yeah at but, the, the, the justice league first godzilla right, or whatever. Right. yeah so. you know you had a tactical pay or a tactile page where you could like feel the CG, like he oh, feels it. i tell you see so Paulski, everyone on this screen better get credit for that idea. <laughs> that's I, right. Uh, that's right when all that like yeah the the full the full sensory edition of daredevil like you know the ultimate, the ultimate gimmick, you know, and then all the pages are black. So you don't have to worry about the artwork because you can't see anything, but you can hear and you can taste and you can smell everything else. That would be the best. Just hear like a <laughs> black, what was that? Uh, hit a, hit a, hit a <laughs> exactly. But you hear it, right? You know, like you just like, you know, you hear heartbeats and stuff. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think it would be awesome. Um, Anyway, we're, uh, we're, I got to get running because I got to go, uh, talk to a tattoo artist oh, yeah, we so do. um oh. uh gotta go guys uh this has been awesome as always um uh sure, yes. have a wonderful holiday and um, do the same and i will uh i'll see you in a month or so and yes, we'll see how three, three pays off and, oh before you leave any you want to promote anything the uh no 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 my, my my newsletter which you know i hope to get a holiday edition out finally um but uh storymaze.substack.com and we'll talk about more stuff uh, in a month. Yes. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you for your Bye. time. Bye. Thank you. Be for good. Your... Take care. Bye. 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 All right.